One common thing that we all as gardeners struggle with, and I've seen this several, several times, I've also been guilty of it myself, is cleaning up soon enough. We all have a tendency to let our crops lay out there and become a safe haven for insects such as squash bugs and fine boars. And keep that hotel going for those insects and when we really need to be cleaning up a lot sooner than we did. That being said, that's what I've done in the last few days. I've been in clean up mode. Had tomatoes, I've still a few tomatoes on the top crop. We sat with a few of them for some products we'll talk about in a little bit. But it's so important to get out there early on and make sure you do some good housekeeping. But we all struggle with that. We do. We think we gotta get just a little bit more. You know, mm -hmm. we're gonna get a little bit more of this. Yeah. I pulled up my watermelons yesterday. Yeah. And there were a few not ready, but it was just becoming a jungle. Your insect population builds up so much, you start getting some disease pressure in there and you're so much better off to go ahead and extinguish that, pull it up, clean it up, and get it rotating, chop and drop, and get it going back into a new crop. Get it ready for fall, and that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. Absolutely. Welcome to the Road by Road Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. So tonight we're going to be talking about planning for your fall garden, but at the end of the show we're going to be giving quick tips on some varieties that you may want to think about incorporating into your fall garden. Now here's the reality on fall gardening. It's not near as popular as spring gardening is. I get that. I understand it. We're maybe not in the same mind frame as we are in the spring, but I can promise you there's certain years that you're a lot more productive in the fall than you are the spring. When you're thinking about school starting back, holidays coming up, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and that's what you see in the stores, is all the holidays. They've already got Thanksgiving out. Just to give you an example, last year we had a wet, wet spring and we didn't make a very good garden crop at all. We struggled with a lot of our crops. They just simply got, they died. Disease, too wet, just didn't work out. We made a great fall garden crop where we were able to salvage the year and have plenty of things to put up in the freezer. Yeah, some people don't enjoy it, but I think I like the fall garden better than summer. I'm not saying I like it better, but I'm getting excited I about like the fall. the greens and yep. the stuff I can plant in the fall. It's we, cooler, it's easier to work out there. When you think about fall garden, what do you think about? What type of crops do you think about? Collard greens, mustard, turnips. Yep. I get to plant my carrots. Radishes and beets. Yeah. Greens, yeah, absolutely. But you know what? There's a lot of things that we can grow in the fall that we normally grow in the spring that do just as well. That being said, if we don't have a very severe white fly pressure, we can grow summer squash, we can grow cucumbers and beans, peas, mm -hmm. and corn. You know, we've talked about corn a lot here lately. So let's give the people an idea of what schedule and what they need to be thinking about going into this fall as we're transitioning right now into the fall. Let's talk about what zone you're in and what you need to be doing. This is going to be, the first part of the show is going to be kind of a planning session. Getting you pumped up and getting you on schedule about what you need to be doing. Okay. All right. Flowers in the garden. Flowers in the garden. You still plant flowers. Always plant flowers. I knew we had the orange ones out there, but I didn't know your others had bloomed. My mixes are coming in really well now, so. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's start with, you wanna start with zone nine over there? Okay. Let's start with zone nine. And in the meantime, I want y'all to look here what we got coming in. Figs, 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 figs is coming in. Now this rain's been playing havoc on the last few days and they're busting a little bit, but uh, we still get plenty, but we get about figs. twice that many a day, and I've been experimenting with dehydrating ooh, ooh, ooh. them. That's delish. Um, the first time I dehydrated them, I split them in half, and those are kind of tough. So the second time, I sliced them thinly, and those did much better. I think that would be a great treat. This Think about dinner. it. You eat figs all year mm -hmm. long. It's just a great snack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, every now and then you're going to get a hold of one sour. That one right there is absolutely perfect right there. Especially with all this rain we're having, you're going to, one's going to sour on you every now and then. 
The best thing to do if you get a hold of a sour fig is to eat two more good ones real quick <laughs> after that. Spit it out uh -huh. in a hurry. Uh, mm. What else we got to do? Well, we have fried green tomatoes. Now these are from those I can. And you taste of it. I'll tell me what you think. Tastes like fried green tomatoes are good. So when I, it's just water and um, citric acid mm -hmm. in here. When you take them out, they are a little soggy, so you have to let them dry out a little bit before you batter them. Um, and I think they need to be sliced a little thicker. Mm -hmm. But overall, I mean, yeah. I think it's a hit. Mm -hmm. Now, several people did tell me that you don't want to keep these over a year because they'll get a little bit more soggy. You think that's good? They're really good. They're good. Mm. Oh, and then the fermented um, salsa out of the tomatillos. You're going to taste this this week. Yeah. You promise not to make any So I houses? tasted this last week. And it was a little strong because it hadn't fermented yet. It was a little salty. I didn't, uh, it was okay. I didn't, it wasn't my favorite thing, but I think it's going to be a lot better since it's fermented out. Smells good. Mmm. A little strong, but smells good. Here's some chips over there. Yeah, any of you guys that love these Mexican dishes like I do need to be thinking about this right here. Now, what's the shelf life on this, you think? Maybe a couple of years? No, no, no. So once it's through fermenting, you put it in the fridge, uh -huh. and then it can last as long, up to a year. Oh, a year, you yeah. think? Okay. I don't think it'll last that long. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of flavor profile there? Yeah, that's really weird. It has just a little bit of heat coming on, but it leaves real quick. It's kind of, it's got some lime juice in it. Mm -hmm. That is, that's really unique. That's good. Now it's different than your regular red salsa folks. This is different from that. Are you salsa or well, that is That is, that is good stuff right there. It's, it feels a little meaty. Is that so? Is that well, you know, the tomatillos tasted a little woodsy mm -hmm. before when just plain. That's good. That's a keeper? Mm-hmm. So that's on a last big week's... difference from in a week on that. A huge oh, difference. Oh yeah, and I think it a like if you wanted it to ferment more, you just wouldn't have put it in the fridge. You let it keep fermenting. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, that'd be good on taco. It would be good on tacos. I think it would be good on collard greens. Mm -hmm. Yep, I can see that. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's move into. We're gonna start with you zone nine guys. And get y'all pumped up and started. Now you're gonna be a little bit behind us in the fall. You always a little ahead of us in the springtime, but in the fall of the year, you got a little bit more time than we got. So, zone nine, continue to plant your zinnias and sunflowers. You got way, way, way more time on those. We always get to thinking, well, it's flower time's about up, but you can plant sunflowers and zinnias. I would say all the way up till zone nine, October. Yeah. Excuse me, first of October. I think you could plant them yeah. all the way up to then. Uh, fall corn, mm, excuse me. <laughs> fall corn, yeah, you got plenty of time to end of August on that right there. You can start, go ahead and start thinking about your onions, getting prepared by that if you're going to plant your onions from seed. And September the 15th to the 30th on that. And of course, you're going to be using the short day varieties. Now, I will tell you this. We are going to have a good supply of short day onion starts this year, but if you want to grow your own, I'd say September the 15th to 30th would be a good time to plant those seeds to get your sets. Normally speaking, it's going to take anywhere from about six weeks to grow out an onion seed from a seed to a transplant. All right. Zone 8. Zone, Zone 8. Us. That's us, baby. Plant your sweet corn, I'm planting mine the 1st of August. So go ahead and get your plant, your sweet corn ready and get it planted. Um, cabbage, you know what? I know this is strange, but we can start our cabbage around the 1st of August also. It takes about four or five, maybe six weeks at longest to get our cabbage grown out and ready for transplants there. And for you guys that want to plant your Brussels sprouts, yes, go ahead and get them started as well. We're looking at three months from the time that plant goes into the ground 
for your Brussels sprouts to be mature. So you're talking about a long-term plant. So you're talking about planting them in the greenhouse or inside? I'm talking about planting them in the greenhouse the first of August, cause, or any time in August, really. Don't get caught up too much on the first of August. You can plant them the first of August, which is probably going to be what I do. But from the time that transplant goes into the ground, we're talking about 90 days. Brussels sprouts to us is absolutely delicious. We love to eat them fresh, but they do test your patience on that. So be thinking about that. If you want to grow Brussels sprouts, there's nothing you want to do without planting. You want to plan those in because they take such a long amount of time. They tie up that spot in your garden longer than anything else in the fall. So mm -hmm. you want to go ahead and definitely want to use drip irrigation on them. Yeah, we can still get those flowers, sunflowers, and all those cover crops in as well. Got plenty of time left, you guys, to get those summer cover crops in. You want to be working on things uh, such as butt wheat, which is going to be your short season summer cover crop. Six weeks from the time you plant butt wheat, normally till we cut it in is a six week window there. So if you got that small, small window, think about butt wheat. Also, we know buckwheat is wonderful for those pollinators. So if you're one of those kind of people that love to be friendly to the bees, it's buckwheat. Mm -hmm. On the opposite end of that is sorghum sedan grass. Sorghum sedan grass does very little of anything for the pollinators. It's for the soil. It is for the soil, and you can mow it, and it's more of a long-term cover crop. So if you got something a bed you wanted now that you needed occupied all the way till frost, sorghum sedan grass would be a good one because Just you can plant mow it. it. Keep mow it, mow it, mow it. Excuse me. Mow it up high and you'll be fine there. I got the sniffles. Did that give you the sniffles? I don't know if it give me the sniffle. I got the sniffles. Uh, Kodiak brown mustard, you know, we've all struggled with root knot nematodes, so we got that Kodiak brown. It's not really going to thrive in this hot weather if we plant it at 1st of September, but it is going to grow somewhat, and we know we're, no, we're not eating this anyway. This is strictly a cover crop to be tilled in. Can from, you eat it? You, it's hot. Oh, it's very spicy. spicy. Yeah. I, I wouldn't recommend it, but uh, I'm going to try it and have had it, but it's way spicier than your regular mustard. Isn't that good to keep um, like the deer away? Yeah, I think so. Yep, yeah. that would be a good one for that. I ain't never thought about that as well, yeah. Um, but you can go ahead and start. If you got a severe nematode problem, go ahead and start with your rotations of that and get it worked in. If you got a bad enough problem, you could put that out, till it in, and then come back and plant another crop right. behind it and work it in twice. Okay. Short day onions, you guys. September 1st through the 15th, you're in zone eight. It's the time to plant those onion seeds. To have them come off for ready to transplant the first of November. What'd be next? Seven? What'd be next would be seven. Seven, seven. Yep, you guys go ahead and get those cabbage and Brussels sprouts in your trays, get them started. Uh, get ready to plant your other brassicas, such as cauliflower, broccoli, what else? Krabi. Mm -hmm. All those right there, you can get started to get those planted. So think about that right there. Go ahead and be making your plans. Get your seeds for that and get started on those right there. Uh, probably on your turnips and mustard, your beets and your radishes. Maybe that's just a little too soon. I'd say somewhere, and we're going to do another show next month on this right here to kind of get you bumped up for that. But I'm thinking around the 15th of September would be a good time to get those other ones planted. And we got... Cover crops and the flowers, just like the rest of them. Keep it bumping on those, man. Keep those flowers rolling. Zone six. Zone six, you guys are up there a little bit north, and y'all gonna have to do things just a little bit different, cause y'all gonna cool off a lot quicker than us southern folks. Beans, get them beans planted. Uh, English peas, collards, turnips, mustard, beets, and radishes. Get them rocking and rolling. In the ground? In the ground the 1st of August, yep. You can start all your cool season cover crops in September so you can get everything going. You can get that cool season cover crop, you can get you a cycle in in the fall of the year to get your organic matter built up in your soil. Okay. So, the other thing that you can be doing is you talk about clean up your spaces, um, pull your weeds, tarp them, plant mm -hmm. your cover crop. You cover that. 
Um, also, your perennials, um, your blooming flowers, like your hydrangeas. There's some of those that this is the time to prune them. Mm -hmm. Your other perennials, deadhead those, get those dead flowers off, trim off any that needs to be trimmed. Um, and also on your summer crops, it's a good time when you're cleaning that out to journal and set, put note what did good for you, what kind of pests you had, what kind of diseases you had, and start planning for next year. That is on my list to start doing a better job. Now, I've done better in the past couple of years documenting everything, and I rely a lot up here, and this is not as sharp as it used to be. Imagine that. You know, I rely a lot on my phone because I'm taking pictures constantly, and I can go back and see what I planted last year, where I planted it, when I planted it, and then the problems I had. Yeah, documenting your journey in the garden is extremely important and it also helps people that you, you know, may be. a mobile journal would be an ideal one, app. It would be. For somebody to come Do it on your phone. Yeah. All right. That's a great Attach idea. Attach a picture. That would be cool. But it is important, especially when you start sharing information with other people, but going back and looking at what you've been successful with and what you have not been successful with mm -hmm. makes a huge difference there. So that is definitely something we need to do a better job on. I tell you what I've got where I do. I know this is strange. <laughs> when I plant something in my garden, I draw me off a map. Yeah, and, you... and I put it behind my desk. And mm -hmm. I pin it behind my desk a map of what I've got planted where. So, yeah. And then you throw it away when you put your new one up. I throw it away when I put my new See, one up. And and I don't then, keep it. I yeah, know, there I know. we go. All right, so let's give some quick picks about some things, about some varieties you need to think about this fall. Some experiences we've had with some of them maybe can help you make a decision on what varieties you want to plant. Let me try the sauce while you're talking. That sauce is good. But you need a little something to drink with it. You got mm -hmm. something you can drink? Have some more water. How about that? These are lime chips. It might have been the lime in these chips you were tasting. I don't, think, I don't so. think so. Yeah. All right, folks. Cauliflower. We all love cauliflower. You know, we talked Sunday night on our live. We was at Cultivate Horticulture Show in Ohio, Columbus, Ohio about a week ago, and we seen a miniature container cauliflower there, which was amazing. I didn't get the name of the variety on it, but I've never seen anything like that, but it was pretty dead gum neat. But if you're wanting to grow cauliflower in your garden for this fall, I want you to think about this variety here, Twister. This Twister variety is a nice white cauliflower, but what makes it very unique is, is the name Twister. The foliage twists around the head and it keeps it nice and pristine and white. Where a lot of the other cauliflowers out there, you have to fold over and tie up to keep mm -hmm. those heads clean. So Twister is a good one. I highly recommend 75 days to maturity. Think about growing it this fall. Kurabi. Now, some of you guys out there have never tried kurabi before. I would highly recommend it as well. It's something we've been growing for what? Mm -hmm. You don't like it or you years? don't like it though. Yeah. But it's good in slaw, it's good roasted. Salads. Pickled. Yep. We love to grow it because it's easy to grow. I even saw where somebody was fermenting some. Hmm, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So we got two, we got more than two, but I got two varieties I want to talk about here just a little bit. The one I probably would recommend planting first thing this fall is going to be one called Conan. Conan is a great one. I grew it before and it works out really good and it's quick. 45 days to maturity. Now with your follow up behind that before a freeze, you want to switch up and use one called Quick Start. Quick Start, excuse me. Quick Start is just what its name says. It's about 35 days of maturity. So if you're trying to rush one in before mm -hmm. the cold weather hits you, it's a good rotation to go Conan first and then switch over and go to Quick Start. Broccoli. You know, I think broccoli is one of the most sought after things to grow in the fall of the year. Everybody loves broccoli. I love broccoli. Broccoli soup. Yep. We got several good varieties out here, but we'll talk about one I had good experience with last year called Godzilla. Mm -hmm. You think that's a good name? Yeah. Godzilla. Godzilla. It was, yeah. It was a huge head. Yeah. Probably the biggest headed broccoli that we've ever seen. It grew out really well for us. Mm -hmm. Now we got another one called Green Magic that we always tout as the most heat tolerant heat one tolerant. we got. We grow and in the spring. 
in late spring and then early fall, Green Magic's going to be a good one. No doubt about that. I'm not taking any way thing away from Green Magic. And if you live in Zone 9 or on down south, it's probably going to be the one you want to go to. However, if you can work that Godzilla variety in just as soon as you can, I think you'll be really surprised. It has a lot of vigor. It did, but it didn't have any disease on it hardly ever. So it's a good variety right there, Chase. 70 days to maturity on the Godzilla. We talked about Brussels sprouts a little bit before here, and I want to give you a, uh, a Brussels sprout. It's probably my favorite one. Jade Cross is a good Brussels sprout. There's your regular green Brussels sprout there. 90 days to maturity, but uh, that would be one that I would definitely recommend. I'm not going to let you do the Brussels sprouts in your garden. I'm going to do Brussels sprouts this fall. I've done made my mind. I'm going to, do, I'm going to take the plunge. I'm yeah. going to do them. Topazio bean. This may be one you've not planted in the past, but a lot of people call this October bean. And the reason being is, is in the Appalachian Mountains in North Georgia, a lot of people have these come off in October so they can put them up for the winter time. And it is a nice bean. I wish I should have brought some in here because we got some shelled out, but it's got nice marbling red on it there. Some people call them cranberry beans, October beans. The proper name for the seed that we have on our website because it's called Tapazio bean. All right, to plant your tapazio beans, you're looking at 67 days to maturity. Let's just say 70 days to maturity, okay? okay. So our average frost date here is going to be November, middle of November. So let's back that off. Boom, it'll be November, October, September. First September, we will plant our tapazio beans. And that'll give you a good three weeks now, to harvest. No, hold on just a minute. Hold on, I'm, I'm backwards here. So that'll be uh, October, I mean, excuse me, September, October, be 60. We want them to come off the middle of October. Mm -hmm. So we want to plant them the 1st of September. Which is going, yeah, that's right. Plant them, with us in Zone 8, it's going to plant them the 1st of September, and that's going to give us a maturity date at the middle of October. Mm -hmm. And you'll have plenty of time to pick them before the frost. Yes, yes. Okay. And what a perfect time to be picking October beans. In, in October. October. Duh. Cabbage, cabbage, cabbage is a is a popular crop to grow. Now, if you've got a big garden and you've got a big family and you want to produce a lot of cabbage, the variety I would highly recommend to you is Cheers. Cheers is one of our best variety. It makes a large head, it's good disease resistance to it. It's probably the most popular variety grown in the commercial market and for good reason, it's highly productive. But what about people like you and I? There's two of us in the household. Mm -hmm. Do we actually need a huge head of cabbage no. all the time? Now, if we're going to make sauerkraut or something like that, yeah, we could do that. But the reality is every time we get a big head of cabbage, most of it goes to waste. Yeah. Chickens get it. Yep. So we have a variety called Katrina, which is ideally suited for raised beds or for containers. It's going to make a smaller head, something like a four-inch Personal here. size. Personal, which is it's going to be yeah. ideal for the both of us. So check Katrina out there, and you know what? It's 45 days maturity. So this is a That's quick good. maturing cabbage, nice four-inch head, which I think is probably going to be one we're going to try this fall. Uh, also, let's talk about cucumbers just a minute. And I know most people don't think about growing cucumbers, but last year we made an excellent crop of cucumbers mm -hmm. in the fall of the year. Pickles, which is something we love to do. We've got a variety called Max Packs, which is probably our most popular cucumber. And the reason, I'm going to say it's a cucumber, it's a pickle. It is a cucumber, but it is a pickle. It's our most popular pickle. And the reason for that is it has the most fast. 55 days. 55 days maturity, but it has the most fast, complex, disease-resistant oh, package yeah. of any of them. Now we're working on a couple more varieties we're going to bring in for next year that we're really excited about. But as we speak, Max Packs has got the market cornered on disease resistance. So that's going to be an excellent pickle for you to plant this fall. Squash. Summer squash. Summer squash. We can plant them in the fall. Mm -hmm. I know we burn out them on <laughs> in the early spring. We got burn out on summer squash easy. But it's time now we kind of want some more summer squash. Now, the summer squash that's around here that everybody's been raving about. Is the one ball? Is the one ball, yeah. which is a nice yellow squash. 
and it's uh in a ball it's ball but it has and i've really never everybody's raving about the flavor of it mm -hmm. Well, I like the meaty texture, the flavor. It also preserves well. Mm -hmm. Very abundant. Yeah. Our, and it's unique, too. Yeah, it's unique. But our neighbor, she had in a raised bed, I think she had six plants, and she couldn't give them away. She had so many. 50 days to maturity. Mm -hmm. So it's one you can work in any time in the fall of the year. The only caveat I would say about summer squash is if we have a if we have a lot of white fly pressure, it could be yeah. troublesome to make that crop. But if we don't, you can very easily make a good crop of uh, And that one squash. ball does excellent in raised beds. Yeah, excellent. Wonderful. Yep. So we've covered your raised beds. We've given you some ideas on some varieties to try this fall. We hope that helped with you. So would you say that's quick picks or Greg's picks? I would say that's Greg's quick picks. <laughs> Greg's quick picks. Okay. Yep. All right, folks. Give you a little update on a couple of things we got coming up with pre sales. We have got our German white garlic ordered and we're going to start pre-selling our German white garlic around the 1st of August. We're excited Ooh. to have it coming in. We got a lot more coming in last year because we sold out like 24 hours last year. In case you don't know, garlic is in hot, hot supply. So we got a big supply coming in that we have uh, got ordered from our farmer up in, uh, I believe, the state of New York. So that's different than the elephant garlic? It is different than the elephant garlic. We're still waiting. Sometime this week, maybe next week, I'll have an update on the elephant garlic when we're going to have it in. But the German white garlic, we've all, the, the harv we always wait till the harvest has been made to know what kind of crop we're going to have. I spoke with the farmer last week. He said to have it harvested, the crop looks good. And he was able to give us a poundage of what he was going to be able to get us. So we've got that locked in. German white, we're going to be pre selling 1st of August. Strawberries. Strawberries. Strawberries was a huge hit last year. And we were limited. We were limited. We're going to be able to sell them more this year. We are. We got a lot more strawberries coming in this year. And we're going to open it up to some more states, particularly yeah. Louisiana and Texas. Mm -hmm. How about that? Yeah. They were left out last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really enjoyed my strawberries. Me and the birds. Yep. I got to figure out how to get the birds to stay. So away. we're going to be doing a channel of variety as well this mm -hmm. year. The channel of variety to me. And give me your thoughts down below if you think I'm wrong. Hey, convince me I'm wrong. But the Chandler variety is absolutely the sweetest strawberry I have ever eaten mm -hmm. that I grew in a garden. Mm -hmm. I agree. So we're going to have an abundance of those coming in. And we're going to start pre-selling those again in August. Around the 1st of August, I hope there. So we've got those strawberries coming. Just want to give everybody an update on that because I know a lot of you are starting to think about that. We always think about fall garden. We think about strawberries and garlic and elephant garlic mm -hmm. and onions and those mm -hmm. kind of things. And the Hossinator contest, there's about two more weeks mm -hmm. before it ends. We'll throw up that flyer, send your picture of your tomato and the original pack on the scales. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the latest weight is? I do not. You should have checked. I should have. I don't. Oh, I know there's been some pretty good, pretty good size ones come in. Old goat. Old goat drawer. Somewhere here on the set, old goat figurine. We had almost a hundred people comment last week. Wow. Yeah. So for those that have never watched the show before and don't know what an old goat is, you mind explaining that? It's just a figurine that's kind of fun to find every week. It's sort of like you know the elf on the shelf. Yeah. It's the goat on the shelf. <laughs> Um, and he's always up to pranks hiding. So find him on the set, put in the comments below where you found the old goat, and we'll enter you in for a drawing of our merchandise. Yep, coveted merchandise. All right, so you want me to do the drawing? Mm -hmm. Mix them up, dude. What's your thing? Well, there it is, right there. All right, and this week's winner is Barbara Harmon. Barbara up. Harmon. Barbara, send us your shipping address to serve at hostools.com and we will get you something sent out in the mail. Okay, how about that right there? Yeah, Barbara Harmon. Boom. Barbara Harmon. So also in the comments, let us know what you plan to plant in your fall garden, especially the zones we didn't cover. If you'll help us out and let us know what you're doing. And if you have a particular variety that excels or does really good for you in the fall, absolutely let us know because it's all about us Helping one another yeah. to grow your own food. Let us know what your quick picks are. Yep. All right. Good deal. Good deal. All right. 
Thank you folks for joining us. We hope we inspired you, gave you some information out there to help you be successful growing your own food. Now it's time for you to get out there and get dirty.